Well, hello everyone. I'm Sybil Starr and I am here today to share with you a video on the angel stars of the zodiac. I have shared several videos on my series, Meet Your Star Nations. And so this is actually part of that seri series, just a little bit different. We're going to be talking about, or I'm going to be sharing with you about the royal stars of Persia, which are connected to uh, the uh, archangels. And then there are quite a few other stars that are also connected to the angelic realm. And so if you find them in your own chart, you might well be very connected to the angelic realm. All right. So let us begin. I'm going to be screen sharing with you. Okay. So here we go. All right. The angel stars of the zodiac. Okay. So we're, like I said, we're going to start with the royal stars of Persia, but then we're going to be talking about some other stars. And there are several stars that are connected to angels that are indicated by planetary placement and angles in your birth chart. They may indicate a connection to the angelic realm as part of your cosmic DNA. We will start with the royal stars of Persia, but there are other fixed stars that are connected to the angelic realm. The royal stars of Persia are each connected to a different archangel and believed to hold up the heavens. The four royal stars of Persia are Regulus uh, in Leo the Lion, and it is connected to Archangel Raphael. Fomal Hut, connected to Archangel Gabriel, Aldebaran, connected to Archangel Michael, and Antares, connected to Archangel Uriel. The royal stars of ancient Persia have long been a part of the imagination of the people who inhabited the region that today is called Iran. For that ancient civilization, every time one of the stars appeared in the sky, it meant it was meant as a sign of transformation in their lives. This is understandable since today we know that they are really the announcers of the changes of the seasons and pre-announce the most important celestial events, the solstices and equinoxes. They were known as the keepers of the celestial gates and the gardens of heaven. The Persians believe that the sky was partitioned in four sectors, each of which was guarded by one of these mystical guardians. Besides, there was a belief that these stars had power, that of being benign or evil, of bringing periods of prosperity or scarcity. So the first star we're going to look at is Regulus the Lionheart. Regulus, also known as Alpha Leonis, is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo and the 21st brightest star in the night sky. It has an apparent magnitude of 1.35 and lies at a distance of 79.3 light years uh, from Earth. Alpha Leonis is not really a single star, but a multiple star system. Okay, and so here is Regulus right here. Okay, and you can see it's a size in relationship to the sun. And of course, here's the sun with Jupiter. And here is Regulus in um, uh, the constellation of Leo. And this would be one of the paws. I'm not sure if they think it's the right paw or the left paw. But anyway, uh, the front paws, put it this way, the front paws of the lion. All right. Uh, the name Regulus means the little king or prince in Latin, and the star is known as Corleonis, the lion's heart. The current zodiacal degree of Regulus is zero degrees, nine minutes of Virgo. Regulus changed signs on September 16th, 2011, due to the precession of the equinoxes. Regulus is most powerful in the summer sky in late August, but most visible from January through March. So yes, it would be right around that those days of August, um, what around August 21st, August 22nd, something like that when Regulus is, is uh, aligned with the sun, but is most visible when it's opposite the sun from January through March. 
Regulus has a three degree orb of influence. So anywhere from 26 Leo to three degrees of Virgo Pisces. So if you have planets or angles at uh, those zodiacal degrees, Regulus could be uh, a very strong force in your own uh, cosmic DNA, in your own chart, your own blueprint. Uh, around 6,000 to 3,000 BCE, the stars of Leo were the heliacal rising stars of the summer solstice, thus the announcer of the summer solstice. Regulus is called the Watcher of the North. All of the royal stars of Persia bring great success, but it can only be gained by facing a certain nemesis. The nemesis of Regulus is revenge. Revenge will be one's self undoing if the star is prominent in one's chart. Regulus in the chart is one of the strongest indicators of leadership and one who has been chosen by invitation of the divine mystery to rule in alignment with divine will. But it can sometimes take many lifetimes to really take this mantle of power and learn how to how to rule. As we can see, there are major teachings around, around one's relationship with power. Okay, and of course, we know Leo the lion, you know, is the one of the signs of leadership and the sign of royalty. Okay, a Regulus is associated with Archangel Raphael, and here he is in the heart of the sun, which means God heals. Many with Regulus strong may also be a natural healer and who, one who heals with the green ray of harmony and balance, as well as the healing power of nature. Archangel Raphael had ancient temples in Atlantis where there was healing with sound, vibration, and crystals. Archangel Raphael is said to sit in the heart of the sun and carries the power of light. So wherever you have if you have Regulus in your chart, wherever you have it, let's just say you have it in alignment with your Mercury, which God of the mind and communication. And so how you might carry the power of light through your communication. Okay. And a few of those with prominent Regulus are John of God, Donald Trump, who has it on his ascendant, Isadora Duncan, John Keats, and Rev Reverend Sung Myung Moon. Okay. And like I said, to just know that it is a sign of leadership, but one has to learn how to lead. Okay. All right. The next star we're going to talk about is Fomal Hut, the mouth of the fish, the southern star. Fomal Hut is the 18th brightest star in the night sky. It's part of the faint constellation uh, Pisces Astronus, the southern fish. In the dark sky, you'll see a half circle of faint stars uh, of which formal hut is a part. This star pattern marks the open mouth of the southern fish. So we look at this map right here. You can see formal hut and there's faint stars around it. And so what it indicates, it is the mouth of the fish. Okay. Uh, formal hut is the announcer of the winter solstice and the watcher of the south. In early September, FOMO hut is opposite the sun, so it shines in the sky all night. And I should say this star is only seen in the southern hemisphere. Um, and it's in alignment with the sun in, er, uh, in early Pisces. Um, FOMO hut is a hot white star about 25 light years away. It's almost twice the mass and size of our sun, but radiates over 16 times the sun's energy. The current zodiacal degree of Fomal Hut is four degrees, 12 minutes of Pisces. Astrologically, it has about a three degree orb of influence. Uh, so if you have planets or angles from zero to six degrees of Pisces, this star would be active in your chart. Okay. And so it would be in alignment with uh, the sun, the end of February. Um, yeah, the end of February. Uh -huh. So in Persia, Pisces was the symbol of the penitent man who seeks salvation, drinking from the water of life. Fomal Hut brought the birth of Jesus and undeniably a new era with all the symbols of the constellation Pisces. Its name derives from the Arabic al hut Fam, the mouth of the fish. And this is the fish drinking from the flow of the urn of Aquarius. Okay, so that's what this is right here. This stream drinking fish is an earlier symbol of life and fertility, for it was 
the one carried it was the one that carried the egg drinking from the sperm of the river of life okay All right if, and uh a fomal hut carries a touch of the mystic a sense of magic and is based on ideals or lofty visions it can bestow charisma but is also the bittersweet madness of the poetic mind challenged to stay in the physical world. This is the child stolen by the fairies who must reject the sweet non-life and flight to return to the world of pain and death. This is from Bernadette Brady. And this is also, I think, really relates to the sign of Pisces as well. As well. It carries the same energy. And as with all royal stars, there is a nemesis that must be faced. And with Fomalhut, the nemesis is hubris and must steer clear of the seduction of charisma in themselves and others. Fomalhut strong in the chart can indicate the potential for charisma as well as hubris, may struggle to keep one's feet on the ground as there is a desire to live in another world, and also can bring extreme talent. According to the channeling of Dr. Beatrix Sazel and Aniko Gresco in Stellar Nation Soul Families, Fomalhut is a stellar world that is like a mystical garden where many magical beings reside. It is the stellar home of the unicorns who carry the dreams of creator into the world. Fomalhut is associated with Archangel Gabriel, the divine messenger, many oracles, teachers, and writers, those who are involved in all forms of communication. We celebrate the nature of Gabriel within us when we speak or sing with elegance, eloquence, joy, inspiration, and authenticity. Fomal Hutt and Archangel Gabriel are associated with the color white. And some famous people with Fomal Hutt strong ties are, or, or strong Fomal Hutt stars are James Barry, who wrote Peter Pan, and the famous Russian composer Tchaikovsky. On to the next star, which is uh, the next royal star, which is Aldebaran, the eye of the bull. Aldebaran is one of the 14th brightest stars, is the 14th brightest star, um, with an apparent visual magnitude of 0 0.85. Its diameter is 44 times that of the sun. The star was once thought to be a member of the Hyades cluster, but in fact, Aldebaran is 85 light years closer to Earth. Aldebaran was probably named the follower because it rises after the Pleiades cluster of stars. Aldebaran is easy to find once you're in the right region of the sky. Oh, well, first I want to show you here. Here's Aldebaran and here's our sun. So you can see it's 44 times larger. All right. Aldebaran is easy to find once you're in the right region of the sky. Uh, the obvious reddish hue is also a great clue, but perhaps the best aid to help you locate Aldebaran is its proximity halfway between two major and recognizable objects. Here's the constellation of Orion and the Pleiades, and Aldebaran sits in between them, okay? Uh, and the three-star line of Orion's belt also points roughly in Aldebaran's direction, although the alignment isn't exact. And so this is actually the belt of Orion right here, these three stars, not these three, but these three. But it does kind of point to Aldebaran, okay? Um, located in the constellation of Taurus, and here's the constellation of Taurus, Aldebaran is often visualized at the bull's eye, this bright red star here called the bull's eye. Uh, Taurus is a very old constellation with bovine associations reaching back to Gilgamesh era Mesopotamia about 4,000 years ago. Taurus might even be the large bull depicted in the ancient cave paintings at Lascaux, France. Aldebaran is associated with the spring equinox and called the Watcher of the East. Aldebaran is currently located at 10 degrees, 6 minutes of Gemini, so is aligned with the sun on May 30th and most visible in the winter night sky from November through January, maybe even February. It has a 3 degree orb of influence, so if you have planets from 7 to 13 degrees of Gemini, this star could be part of your cosmic DNA. 
the ancient Greeks, Egyptians, Babylonians, and Romans all shared the concept of Taurus the bull, though in some native cultures, Taurus was the head of a bison rather than a bull. Far to the north, the Inuit people of the Arctic saw Aldebaran as a polar bear. Taurus seems to be charging eastward towards Orion, who looks poised to defend himself, and indeed this drama plays out in some myths. The star Aldebaran uh, was also called the Eye of Revelation. For the Arabs, she was the leader of the stars. Taurus is associated with the divine power of the great architect. Aldebaran is considered the star Buddha, the star of enlightenment. More than 5,000 years ago, it marked the beginning of the new Babylonian year. I really like this image here of uh, Taurus the bull. Taurus marked the vernal or spring equinox from about 4,000 to 1700 BCE. To the Mesopotamians, this was the great bull of heaven and was depicted in a winged form. The bull was also sacred to the Egyptians who celebrated the birth of Apis the bull, seeing this animal as a living god. Aldebaran is the watcher in the east and the cornerstone marking of the spring equinox. In this capacity, Aldebaran was the god Mithra, the slayer of the cosmic bull. Mithra was a military god who gave victories to his followers, but only if they followed the strictest procedures in his worship. Aldebaran's connection to Mithra implies success, but will come only through ethical integrity. Aldebaran strong in the chart can indicate one will gain respect, success, and reputation for honesty at all costs, but one will face moral dilemma, which will challenge one's integrity. If one steps out of integrity, it will be one's self undoing. It's the nemesis of Aldebaran. Aldebaran has a very strong cosmic leadership school in our galaxy and was said to be colonized by the Lyrans. Some famous people with Aldebaran strong are uh, Ab Abraham Lincoln, August Rodin, Neil Armstrong, William Penn of the Pennsylvania Quakers, and Mao Tse Sung. And Aldebaran is associated with Archangel Michael. And here is his image here with his sword of light. He's often referred to as the principle of light. Michael is a protector. He will protect you against negative and psychic attack. He is often depicted holding a sword and shield as his tools to fight and protect. Michael is the most powerful of angels, so it is wise to have him by your side until you realize the mighty power of your own true light and love inside your soul. Aldebaran and Archangel Michael are associated with the color of royal blue. And Aldebaran is said to be the stellar home of the guardian angels. All right. So next we go to Antares, the last of the royal stars of Persia. Antares, or Alpha Scorpii, is a red supergiant star located at an approximate distance of 550 light years from Earth in the constellation of Scorpius. With an average apparent magnitude of 0 0.96, it is the brightest star in Scorpius and the 15th brightest star in the sky. It marks the heart of the celestial scorpion and is part of a prominent southern asterism known as the fishhook. A star uh, some 700 times larger than the sun and so incredibly enormous that it challenges the English language. I want to show you over here. Okay, so here's here's our sun right here. Here is our sun. <clears throat> and here it is in relation to some other stars in relation to Sirius, Pollux, Arcturus, Arcturus Aldebaran, Regal, and here is Antares. Okay, it's huge. And Be Betelgeuse is even larger, okay? If the sun were a penny lying on a basketball court, Antares would be almost the width of the court itself. Or if you were to put Antares in place of the sun, would be inside it, and the edge would be out past the orbit of Mars. It's huge, but it is a dying star. 
And even though it is quite large, it is losing, ma losing mass and become a supernova in the next 10,000 years. And Betelgeuse is there as well. It is believed it's also a dying star because its light flickers. And uh, that it they've just reached kind of like their mass. And now and they will uh, at some point ex implode or what, how, whatever happens and start all over again, become a new star. Okay. All right. It is easily visible to the Antares is easily visible to the naked eye and often mistaken for Mars as it is so red. Summer evenings are a fine time to seek out Antares when the star rides about as high as it will get along the southern horizon. This is particularly important if you're trying to view Antares from more northerly attitudes. Antares is known as the heart of the scorpion. And Babylonian writings from 5,000 years ago refer to the constellation as a being with a burning sting. In Greek lore, the scorpion occasionally battles Orion the hunter, and so the two of them are separated in the sky. Orion is visible in the winter, Scorpius in the summer. And here it is right here. Here is the constellation of Scorpius. And Teres is the heart of the scorpion. It's right in the center of that constellation. Uh, and Teres is currently located at 10 degrees, I believe it's seven, not six, degrees of Sagittarius. It is aligned with the sun on December 1st and most visible from May through July. And really, it does look like Mars. You, you really can think it is. It has an, on some nights because it is so bright. It has an orb of influence around three degrees. So if you have planets or angles from seven to 13 degrees of Sagittarius, the star has influence in your soul blueprint. And Terry is associated with the fall equinox and called the watcher of the West. Okay. All right. Scorpius is the southernmost constellation in the Zodiac. And it once contained the stars of Libra from 5,000 to 1,000 BCE. This is the part of the sky that was seen to slip in the southern hemisphere. And so the constellation was associated with the underworld, a harbinger of death and endings. <clears throat> and Teres is the watcher of the west. To the Persians, this star was the god of the dead. It does bring great success, worldly or otherwise. However, it also indicates that one can be the cause of their own undoing. The general theme of this star is to generate success by going through a cleansing life or death experience. It can indicate that one seeks intensity, even when it is not required. It indicates extremes, whether by choice or not. When strong in one's chart, a person can feel that one's life is always full of archetypal struggles and may be prone to obsession. Some people with Antares Terry Strong, uh, John F. Kennedy Jr., Isadora Duncan, Marquis de Sade, Henry VIII, John of God, Benedict Arnold, and Marie Antoinette. Antares is associated with Archangel Uriel, and here is Archangel Uriel. Uh, the fire of God. Archangel Uriel is often referred to as the angel of wisdom. He can help shine a light on God's truth when you're going through darkness and confusion. He is known as the angel of destiny, a divine companion who knows the secrets of our incarnation. He is associated with the color yellow, and some say also the color pink. And there is a small community of angels living in Antares who are the guardians of a seventh dimensional heavenly library of the Akashic records. They are the keepers of go collective galactic remembrance. And this is really interesting. Okay. Um, it, these are the stargates of Aldebaran and Antares. Aldebaran is considered the star, a star of enlightenment and allows us to download new and inspired ideas from the universe straight into our minds. The star nation of Aldebaran is a very powerful leadership school in the Milky Way galaxy. Souls come from many different star nations for this training, either through incarnation or travel to here from their star systems. Aldebaran is also believed to be the home of the Silver Gate Portal, 
which is the entrance point for souls traveling to or reincarnating back to earth. As the souls travel through the Silver Gate portal, they are bathed in the protective light of Aldebaran before making their way into the new reincarnation. And then the Stargate of Antares. Antares was created to be a star portal that connected the Andromeda galaxy to the Milky Way galaxy. Through this portal, many etheric beings from the Andromeda galaxy to the Milky Way to begin the new cosmic experimentation in a more physical reality. So what this says is that there are beings that enter uh, into um, this galaxy through the Antares Stargate. And then often they go through the Stargate of Aldebaran for their series of incarnations. Anyway, Antares is the home of higher dimensional entities, both physical and non-physical. It is an important gateway to other galaxies and universes. Some souls upon incarnation choose to pass through the Antar Antares gateway to activate soul memory. Some star seeds here on Earth Usually those who originated in the Andromeda galaxy come through the Antares Stargate. This is from Debbie Solaris. Antares is also called the Golden Stargate, as this is the gate those leaving the incarnation cycle also use to leave, to you, to leave this galaxy. These two stargates are opposite each other in the zodiac. So if one is present in your cosmic DNA, both are, are, both are on some level. Aldebaran is, well, it was, I said nine, but it's actually 10, 10 degrees of Gemini and Antares is at 10 degrees of Sagittarius. It is a powerful star seed marking. All right, now the other angel stars. Now these, these come from, this material comes from the Stellar Nation Soul Families channeled by Dr. Beatrix Sazel and Aniko Gresco. And I find I really relate to these stars. Um, so the first star is Spica. It's at 24 degrees, 10 minutes of Libra in the Virgo constellation. And this is said to be the stellar home of the angels, that when one's soul origin is angelic, this would be the first, this would be where uh, one would begin um, uh, the one soul journey, put it that way, our first fragmentation from source. We know that uh, we are all still part of source. We are all still... Um, with source, but we source experiences itself through us. All right. So the second star is Alcyone at one to zero degrees, 19 minutes of Gemini and the Pleiades. And this uh, angelic um, star has to do with the healing community of angels, a very, of a very high frequency as it never leaves the photon belt. Third star is Tigeta, also the Pleiades at 29 degrees, 54 minutes of Taurus. And this star indicates angels that are bearers of the all seeing eye and healers of exceptional psychic abilities. Alkis at 24 degrees of Virgo in the crater constellation. Here, this is an angelic school of spiritual healing led by Archangel Raphael. Canopus at 15 degrees, 14 minutes of Cancer in the Argo constellation. This is a divine messenger of creator and helps us remember our original mission codes. So if you carry this star marking in your chart, this is what this could indicate for you. And, and you might be one who does remember the, your original mission codes. Betelgeuse at 29 degrees, five minutes of Gemini and Orion. The angelic seat of divine law in the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, Bellatrix at 21 degrees, 17 minutes of Gemini and Orion. These are the angels who enforce divine law. Shadir, uh, Shader, I think is what is how you say it. Shader at eight degrees, seven minutes of Taurus and Cassiopeia. This is a stellar bridge, which opens the gate for angelic beings descending into our solar system. And then Algol, of 26 degrees, 30 minutes of Taurus in the Perseus constellation. We've been hearing a lot about Algol. It is actually an angel star, but it is the home of the fallen angels, according to uh, 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 Beatrix and Aniko. 
And so and I also wanted to say that most of these stars have anywhere from a two and a half to four degree um, orb of influence. So you can, uh, I would maybe just stick with three. I think three is probably the best. Just look at three degrees on either side and know that this, you may well have this star projection or marking in your own chart. All right. So anyway, these are the stars that I wanted to share. And I just wanted to let you know that I do galactic astrology starseed readings and you can contact me at my website and you can see, you know, see what having these angel stars, if they're in your chart, what they might mean for you. All right. So I just want to say thank you for watching my video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, we're learning. I'm learning more and more myself all the time about these different stars. And so this was very much a teaching video, not so much a channeling video, although some of the material here is channeled. And I've been working with these stars and I really find that they are very relevant and very important in people's lives. As I do many readings for many people and see these stars in there. All right. Well, wishing you all a wonderful day. Many blessings. If you like this video, please check like and subscribe and also look at my other videos on uh, the Star Nations and there's more to come. I have a whole new page on my website called my Star Nation Gallery with different and they're teaching videos, like I said, and they're very much introductory videos uh, to really become acquainted with who these different uh, star beings are. All right. As I say, many blessings to all and namaste.